finally talk the Duff movie. Hi everyone, I'm Miranda here, and today I have a movie review on this book, which got turned into a movie, The Duff. The Duff, like, dropped in Australia about, like, three to four weeks ago now. America got it in freaking March, or, like, end of February, March. <gasps> We're still out now, and I know it's, like, one of the last places to get movies. I dragged to Scarlet. <laughs> I longed to see this movie at the start of the week, and let me just say, I love this. For me, I found the book and the movie were two kind of separate things. Things. I felt like everything that made uh, the movie the movie was necessary because if the movie had just stuck exactly to what the book was maybe it would be too simplistic and in modern days people may not have enjoyed it as much. The movie brought out the stereotypes more of modern day, made it more like Mean Girls, whether the book did have your stereotypes but it wasn't necessarily you know the geek or the popular girl, this that and the other. And they also like put in a couple more characters, for example the principal, the Asian teacher, uh, which he was cool by the way, and also you know the popular girl. So yeah, the movie definitely kind of shook things up a bit. It did it for the better and I think the movie works for the movie, the book works for the book. If you have not watched the movie I suggest you click out because now I'm going to be discussing all the spoilers for the movie my thoughts on it what I like dislike and all that stuff so if you haven't watched it I'd probably be spoiling you if you don't want to be spoiled click out so you know like I said before I dragged this guy to see this movie I did not expect him to like the movie bringing the boyfriend along to one of these movies it's kind of like a chick flick but not but he really enjoyed it and actually it was one of his like favorite movies which got me really surprised. It wasn't necessarily my favourite movie or favourite book to movie adaptation. How horrible was the beginning, right? When she's walking with her two best friends, then you have these like, I don't know, gossipy nerds or whatever, and they're labelling them for what they like best about all of them, and then they don't have anything to say about Bianca. I felt so sorry for her because, you see May, the one that played Bianca, I think she's a good looking girl. Like, I don't see anything wrong about her. The fact that nothing would be said about it, it's kind of really, really upsetting. I really thought that, you know, Bianca had the best personality out of all of them, so I think those guys should have, you know, talked about her personality. May as Bianca, let me just say, I love her from Parenthood, that's where I know her, and I loved her as Bianca. I thought that she played the part so well, and I love Bianca's personality and bubbliness and just happiness and positivity and how she's comfortable in her own shoes. You know, those three dudes have nothing on them. In the book, Bianca, Bianca, however you pronounce it, where you're from, was supposed to live with her dad. Her mum had supposedly left her dad and her dad was kind of like a bit of an alcoholic and not to say the most supportive person and a bit like her mum uh, in the book her mum will come back but she didn't really have this strong relationship with her mum. In the movie they made it that the mum was going really bad for the divorce to begin with and then became this strong independent woman. They probably did this um, to create maybe a hidden message within the movie that you know you should uh, be strong, stay true to yourself and not let bad things get you down or something like that. Yeah the roles reverse. it worked in a way. I like the book aspect of it a bit better. I did adore her mum in this movie. That point that she was doing like the duck face and she didn't even know what to call it. I liked when you know she had the five stages. It was really funny. Uh, the bit where you know Wesley told her that she was a duck, they kept that exactly like the book. I'm so happy they did that because I love that when she just splashed that soda or whatever on him and he's just like <laughs> And I like how, you know, straight after that she's like, oh shit, takes a look at herself and she's like, I'm the Duff. But the funniest sign was, oh shit, even my car's a Duff. When she showed up the next day and she was like in her pyjamas and all that stuff, I'm just like, deep down, everyone wants to have one of those days where you just rock up in your pyjamas. I don't give up about anything. I didn't think the need for Yanka to really break up with her friends. I have had time to sew for her friends, but that, that whole thing, I'm gonna unfriend you here, delete you here, this, that and the other, it's true because, you know, when, when you do break up with your friends, you, you do do that. The relationship between Wesley and Bianca was very different from the book. See, in the book they have more of this friends with benefits thing going on, and at the end Wesley kind of falls for her, they eventually get together. In the movie, it's more uh, Wesley and her have known each other their whole lives, and have not really talked, or if they have, it hasn't been very good. For me, this concept, you know, I, I like the book, what they had. I don't know, I just think it matched the book, but for the movie, I understand why they had to possibly change that. And like I said, the de-duffing thing was very cool. I liked how Wesley knew what he was talking about in terms of bras when he went in the bra shop. I, even I didn't know 
what the hell those terms meant. And it was funny how when they were at the mall, um, he had Toby Tucker's like face. Scarlett and I were like laughing because that mannequin actually looked like Toby Tucker. But wasn't it so annoying how Madison's friend had to record that whole thing? Okay, who would want to be with Madison in the first place? You know, Balladon, she played it really well, but Madison totally pissed me off. How could Wesley even be with her in the first place? The fact that she finds humiliating people like that for fun, something mentally wrong up there. Especially that part where Bianca was crying in the toilet got me. I really felt it. It's horrible just how people can be cyberbullied and how bullying does occur. <laughs> Did you like the part where um, she was in the cafeteria at the mall? Like the Americans call it, we call it the shopping centre. She was asking a guy out and that guy thought it was just like a big huge YouTube star. Oh my god, they should have put like a YouTube star there, that would just be brilliant. But what I did like was at the end of the day, you know, at the shopping centre, how this guy worked, I don't know, with the ice creams or something, ended up coming up to her and kind of talking to her and I'm like, you know, she should have called him back. Seemed like a really decent dude. Now, one of my favourite parts was when um, she punched Wesley and then um, the bag of peas that ended up supposedly being for Wesley were for her because she hurt her hand. I think in the book that punch was, uh, Wesley was supposed to be punched by Bianca's dad. Just keep the relationship that started to form between them. I found it very believable. I liked when they went to the, the rock which turned into the kissing rock and when she was like leaning in to kiss him and then kiss the side of his face and just like... In this movie, we see that Wesley doesn't have the best family life. In the book, it was more he had his sister, and his sister was kind of scared for him and, you know, what he was doing. And I think, oh, in the book, because I read it quite a while ago, Wesley's grandma or something was the one that didn't like his lifestyle, because Wesley would just sleep around all the time more than what it was said to be in the movie. Toby Tucker. Oh my god. He wasn't even hot to begin with. It was cute to begin with when they kind of started talking. Then he's such a dick. He was just using her for her dark qualities. And he didn't even make the sushi. I felt really bad here um, because then Wesley got back with Madison. How could you get back with Madison after what she did? Are you serious? This girl is mental. She tapes her own life thinking she's going to be famous. Bianca and the homecoming and this is how it ended. She rocked that homecoming dress. I thought she looked beautiful and I loved how she felt confident and it's just totally, totally her. I absolutely loved it. And the cutest thing was, Wesley didn't accept the crown. He's just like, nah, I got the girl. I really liked the, how that kind of inspired her to end up writing that thing, um, what homecoming means to me. And I really loved that Asian teacher, by the way. He was he was wicked. It ended up, you know, they got together and what I really love are their personalities together because you can see that they can become each other's best friends. And what really is true about this whole movie is even if you are the duff, it shouldn't change who you are. At the end, like, in terms of relationships and stuff like that, it's whether you're just happy. It shouldn't matter about looks or anything. It should just matter about the personality of the person and whether you can match that. I hope you enjoyed my mini movie review for the duff. I don't have much time today so like I did like a mini one but I really just still wanted to talk about it. What were your thoughts on the movie? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you think okay? Did you think they could have done it better? Let me know and comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. See ya!